All right, everybody, we have come now to module number nine, which brings us to the psychedelics or the hallucinogens, a very interesting family of substances for us to talk about in our class. And we're making our way through. We are almost here at the end, talking about all these different classifications and classes and families of different substances. You may remember back a few weeks ago, we talked about two substances, and I told you that the names of them are what they say they are. We talked about the stimulants and how there is a classification of drugs and substances that by their pharmacological nature, when we ingest them in the body, they naturally speed up brain process, central nervous system function, breathing, heart rate, because so therefore they're called stimulants. And then we talked about the depressants. And I told you that week that the, that the depressants, they are what they say they are. Those are substances that just naturally, we don't have to do anything to make them do what they naturally do. You ingest them, they naturally soothe, they bring down, they slow down, they depress or repress central nervous system function, cognitive function, heart rate and breathing. And then we come to this week where, again, the name of this drug class, it is what it says it is, the psychedelics or the hallucinogens. It's possible maybe you've already had your abnormal behavior class, and when you studied bipolar disorder or you studied schizophrenia, especially your schizoaffective disorder, you talked about hallucinations. You talked about how one of the common features, for example, of schizoaffective disorder and schizophrenia are what we call experiencing hallucinations. Hallucination is a sensory experience not grounded in reality. And so that would that that most commonly though that would be in, include where people hear and see things that are in reality not there. They perceive it as real, but it is not real. And so part of the hallucination kind of experience is a disconnect from reality. The part of the brain that manages accurate reality perception is in some way not working right. Well, that's actually what happens with these hallucinogenic psychedelic substances. There are certain substances that are out there that have as a natural effect when we ingest them, they affect that part of the mind, the brain, that, that, we, that is responsible for accurate reality testing. So when people take these substances, they have a number of psychedelic or hallucinogenic kinds of experiences. And I list several of those range of responses in, uh, in, your, in, in your lecture notes this week. For example, people may have what we call psychotic experiences, where they, where they actually hear and see things uh, that, that are really in actuality not there, or psychodynamic you know, kinds of experiences, or aesthetic kinds of experiences, or transcendental kinds of experiences. There's all kinds of different experiences that we sometimes see with the psycho psychedelics and the hallucinogens, some which are pleasurable and soothing to the user. Others are terrifying and scary to the user. It depends on the user and, and their state of mind oftentimes and how much of these substances that they oftentimes take. And so the psychotic, hallucinogenic, psychedelic experiences are, 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 are central to the hallucinogens. Uh, I list for you in this module just a basic, really quick overview of just the interesting history, sort of like alcohol and tobacco and many of these other uh, drugs we've talked about and substances we've talked about in this class, they have such an interesting history. And that's true for the psychedelics. Uh, there's an interesting history historically as far as in, as far as in, in kind of almost like in ancient times and pre, uh, many, many years ago. In our nation, historically, culturally, the psychedelics have had sort of an interesting place. And even today, still have an interesting place in history in many, many, in many, many ways. And so I give you a little bit of history for you to kind of look at. And then kind of like I, we've done in every single one of these modules, there are some specific substances that I want you to be familiar with. Uh, the first two, the two big ones, we refer to by their initials, PCP and LSD. And so you probably have heard of LSD and PCP. Those are both hallucinogenic, psychedelic kinds of substances that we still see today, uh, maybe not as much as we used to, but both of those are still somewhat fairly popular on, on, on the streets, especially today as far as a recreational kinds of mind-altering kinds of drugs. And so PCP and LSD are, would be, are, are two large kinds of uh, substances that kind of fall into this family, and then I mentioned for you MDMA or ecstasy. Again, we're here. We're, we're here. We're not hearing as much lately about MDMA as we used to back about ten or fifteen years ago, but still, it is uh, considered in some ways we call it a recreational or a party drug that we sometimes still do see today among young people and college students and young professionals to an extent. Not as much as we used to in the previous generation, but still MDMA is out there. It has a milder. Um, psychedelic hallucinogenic potential than say LSD and PCP. Those are more, those are more, um, more serious, so to speak, as far as, as far as the effects that they can have on someone psychedelic, psychedelically or, 
if from a hallucinogenic perspective. MDMA less so, but still MDMA more milder, but still is out there. And then I also give you uh, some information about the peyote cactus and mushrooms. Uh, not long ago, a couple semesters back, I actually had a student who visited with me after class one day. He was doing his internship here locally, not far from the campus. And he was working, he was doing his drug and alcohol field practicum, and he was working primarily with teenagers right here in this area. And he spoke to me after class about a conversation he had had in the group the previous night with his clients at his practicum site. And they really were talking about uh, psychedelic mushrooms. And he was asking me, he was giving me some names that I had never heard of. He said, Professor Keene, have you ever heard of this or heard of this? He said, I had never heard of this. And he said, last night in my group, my kids were talking about, hey, I've tried this. Have you tried? Well, what is that? He said, I didn't know what they were talking about. So like a good drug and alcohol counselor, I said, hey, man, y'all educate me. And so he said they began to, he said what it was that what they were talking about was psychedelic mushrooms and how that was kind of at least in, in, in the kids were saying that in this part of Houston, there was kind of a resurgence and an interest in that and that kids were learning, going online, learning how to grow them and that some were being brought in from other parts of Texas and all kinds of things. And he was asking me if I had heard of these names. I'd never heard of them before. They were new names to me. But it just reminded me that just when you think something is old fashioned, it comes back. And so uh, psychedelic mushrooms or peyote is another one of those examples that when you, when, just when you think it's not relevant anymore, not interesting anymore, people are always curious about something new and different especially when people are experimenting with substances. And so oftentimes one of those trends you often see is something will go away, then it will come back. And so that was probably less than two years ago, right here, probably within four or five miles of the Montgomery campus. He was sharing with me about the teenagers in his group, how they were talking to him. They weren't using the term mushrooms or psychedelic mushrooms. They were using another street term. And he finally realized that that's what they were referring to. And his kind of comment to me, he was a little bit older, you know, than them. He was like, he was like, man, I kind of was surprised a little bit that, that was still what they were, that, that was kind of what they were, that, what they were experimenting with. So it's good to be familiar, obviously, with all of these different types of substances, because just when you think something is old fashioned and gone away, it comes right back. So the psychedelics, the hallucinogens, a great uh, classification to study. It will lead us into our conversation next week in marijuana. We're going to talk about marijuana a little bit next week in module number 10. So look at your lecture notes for the week. Do your discussion question. You're doing great on your discussion questions, by the way. Do your homework. You're doing great on your homework assignments, too, by the way. Come back next week, module 10. We'll talk about marijuana. We'll start winding our class down here in a couple of weeks. I will see you then.